All right, all right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Um, Samir said he'll join in two minutes. All right, no problem. Uh, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, on the basics of TOS first, we have a couple of things to go over today. Um, that being, uh, the basics of TOS. We're gonna talk about um, pre market and how we can look at pre market trends. Um, and really understand what happens pre-markets to sort of base our decisions, what happens intraday. Um, also talk about level two, which is this beautiful little tool down here. Um, it's not really filled right now because there's not that many exchanges open or anything. Yeah, it's just going to be this. So I'm not really sure if I'll be able to give a really good example of that, but we'll look at level two and... Along with that, I'll try to explain futures to the best of my ability of um, the futures of crude oil, the futures of uh, um, gold, natural gas, ES is um, the S&P future, um, NQ, the NASDAQ future. So it's going to take a really look at everything again. Um, this is, I assume, to be a very lengthy video going forward. So... Feel free to skip around to the parts you're interested in. Um, the beginning part, I will just talk about uh, if you do have a, um, if you do have like a very new platform of TOS, um, how to get it started, how to really get it up and running to your, to the ability of, um, so it looks like mine sort of more, more or less. And then you can obviously fine tweak it um, based on your preferences after that. Um, let's just um, wait until another minute or two. Um, I'm just going to wait another minute or two to. Uh, wait for one of my friends that I'm mainly doing the stream for, Samir. He has a very basic version of Thinkorswim, and we're trying to get him up to the part of where I have it, where I have like widgets right here, of watch list, um, the news of, of my choice, um, also these different sorts of studies, the RSI, MACD, volume, uh, EMAs, SMAs, VWAPs, all of that fun stuff. Um, we'll try to get... Uh, Everybody up to par with that. Um, let's see. I know. I know a lot of y'all just watch these as informative videos, not really planning to trade on TOS, which is fine, which is great. Um, but the first part of this video will be um, the basics of TOS. Uh, while I wait for Samir to join the stream, uh, right now we can just talk about overall markets, right? So I know the futures opened up. And they are down almost a hundred points, which is nearly four point three percent. Down four point three percent. That's obviously not good for the uh, markets right now. Again, with all this Corona scare going out, uh, cities going it down into lockdown. I know LA has been ordered. Um, a lot of other cities are being ordered to stay indoors, um, avoid going out, and all that. So, when I look at the market overall, the S and P is down ten points. Uh, getting close to that 7.5, and we know when that 7.5 comes around. Um, sorry, I was looking for the messages. But uh, 7.5, we know if it goes down that much, we hit a circuit breaker or a market-wide circuit breaker. And at this rate, guys, I believe we will hit a market, uh, um, a circuit breaker in the morning. So... Let's see what happens in the morning uh, with the S&P 500. See if we go into a whole, uh, market-wide circuit breaker. And along with that, as we read on this message right here, um, shoot, my bad. As we read on this message right here, if the futures do go down 5%, uh, we'll go into a futures, um, we'll go into a futures uh, limit down, basically, which will be uh, frozen trading throughout so all right let's get started with the basics of tos um this is yes yes is the s p futures trigger um yeah if you actually you tried to do that before 
I'll leave this back too. Perfect. So um, let's just go through the basics of TOS again. This is how I have it set up. You do not have to have it set up like this. Um, but obviously, if I teach you the ways, you can personalize it as you wish afterwards. So on my left here, I have um, three different, uh, four different sort of wi widgets right here. Um, first is going to be my news tab. And my news tab always correlates with the chart that I have up right here currently. And that is due to the fact I have these uh, news, news feeds and my charts linked with this one. So let's say I do Tesla, right? As soon as I put in Tesla, all the Tesla news will appear right here on the left. Um, that's how I have my news, uh, news side uh, set up. Yeah, so that's how I have my news set up. You can obviously go down here in the plus menu, add all different sorts of uh, widgets and gadgets that you want, Trader TV, um, Tetris, I've never seen that, uh, Quick Coat, Quick Chart, um, Minesweeper Level 2, all these different things. Uh, account info I have up here, I guess I, I guess that counts as a widget. That's just very, um, it is just, just there already at the beginning of TOS, so I didn't really touch that. And I do have my privacy on two reasons, I guess. Main reason is I don't like seeing my account balances in front of me at that very second when I'm trading. Um, second reason is uh, obviously I'm streaming, so I don't want my account information out there, um, that being this thing up here. So I have my live news set up right here first. And then below that, I have three watch lists, all right? And I'll open these up. And through that, you just do click watch list, and it'll come up with a new, new, new basically, uh, widget. And let me delete that one for now. So here's my three watch list. My first one contains all of my futures and ETFs that I keep a good, close eye on. First, we have the uh, S&P 500 future. Um, let me just show you how you can quickly go me make a uh, watch list. Um, open and drop down anything like this and um, create a watch list right here. And I can name it anything like test. And I can add a GE um, Tesla AMD. Whatever, so on and so forth. I can even move it up and down right here. Say it like that. And then this is my test watch list. Um, not really ever going to do anything with that watch. So I'm just going to delete it real quick. Uh, and then go back here and futures and ETF. So how I have my uh, futures and ETF is first I have my S&P future. And again, you can link this to your chart. So as soon as I click it right here, it automatically pops up in my chart. Um, I, I, I don't know why I don't do this. I just don't really have it synced with my charts, which is okay. I just usually drag it over. Um, but let's see, I'll leave it on for now. If I, if I end up liking it, I like it. Uh, I'll change all of these to one. So anything that's linked with one is going to show up in my news and my... Um, my charts so I have it set up with the S&P future the oh, sorry I got distracted there uh, S&P future SPY which is the overall market ETF the S&P and SPXL which is the short term three times bull of the S&P and SPXS, which is a short term, three times inverse. Um, short term meaning they decay over time. You can't hold these um, for long times, long periods of time because they do decay. Um, so that's why I call them short term. And then below that, I have my natural gas. My second thing that I keep a lot of focus on other than the markets itself. Um, natural gas with U gas and D gas right below it. U gas is the inverse that follows. D gas that uh, sorry, 
U gas follows natural gas and um, D gas is the inverse of natural gas. So I'm just interested to see here. Okay, so natural gas did open um, gassing down. So we'll see D gas tomorrow around that. Yeah, 350 range, 355 um, to get in. And then um, that's how I have this watch list set up. Evan Scan is a scanner that I have made or used that um, it scans for stocks with the minimum of $1 to a maximum of $20, volume of 500 uh, minimum, 500,000 volume minimum, and then a percent change in the day. This is usually set at 5%, and then I scan all my stocks through there. Um, so the reason three times leveraged ETFs are short term is um, because they decay over time. So you can't, uh, sorry, let me just go over this question. So Samir asked in a group chat, why are three times leveraged ETFs um, not long term holds and why are they short term? The reason is... Um, three times e leverage ETFs, they eventually have a decay to them. So overall, as you're holding um, the position, your your stock will just overall decay. Um, so in that case, meaning like you can't hold a three times ETF, even you know, if you know it's going higher, they will um, continue to decay over time. And they do take larger steps of, um, percentages as you move so it's a big decay factor is why people don't hold three times um, leveraged over a long period of time and um, yes let me go over the uh, scanner again so this is a very basic scanner you can get very intricate with these scanners um, you can search for stocks that are five percent away from their yearly 52 weeks high you can search stocks that are at their 52 week low just a lot of like stuff you need to mess around with in a scanner. You can even uh, go on YouTube. There's a bunch of different scanners that people would make. For me personally, I am a, most of the times I like to uh, trade low cap stocks, really risky stocks. Um, but usually I'm in and out within uh, small periods of time. So uh, my stock scanner is from the minimum of a dollar up to a maximum of dollar per share. Uh, five hundred thousand dollar. Uh, five hundred thousand volume is the minimum. Minimal. And uh, maximum. I don't really have a cap on the volume because I don't mind. As more the more the volume, the better for me. Um, that really drives price action and stuff for me. And percent change is the change in the overall day. I want the stocks in the scanner to be at least moving by five percent if I'm going to take a look at them. Um, so that's how my scanner is set up. In this case, I don't think anything should pop up right now, even if I do zero, zero. Yeah, nothing's gonna pop up. Oh, I guess we do. Uh, I don't know if this is from Monday or, or I mean Friday or, yeah, I think this is just information from Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Because I remember HEPA was pushing up. INL was on the up. Yeah, I'm not completely sure. Um, but this is how my scanner works right now. Uh, it sort of just runs through these scans, right? Has the, has the ticker symbol, the price, the volume, and um, the percent change since open. And then the, all that scanner does is it pops up right here. So if we go here... It usually filters it out in normal trading hours. It will usually be, be the same results here and here, down here. They'll be the same results. Um, so they're usually updated. And as that scanner is running in the background, my stocks are getting updated right here. So if I need to take a look at uh, TUSK, right? I can quickly look. I don't like the setup. Next, what's next, right? Um, just quickly cycling through stocks like that for me is uh, what I do. So that's how why I have my scan set up here. 
And then below on the watch list is just um, some big cap blue chip stocks that I like to keep a watch on. I like to keep a watch on Apple, AMD, Beyond Meat is some, like, just keep a sort of eye on. NVIDIA, I like to keep on. Roku, I have kept a close eye on for the past uh, six months, probably. Um, and I think the stock has a lot of potential once the market recovers. And uh, Tesla, obviously, I like to keep an eye on that. I've day traded it many times in the past. Um, so, yeah, that's how I have my watch list set up. And uh, let me see if y'all have any further questions. Questions. Okay, nothing right now. Um, so moving on to how to get my screen to look like this, how to get my charts like this. On the right, right here, I have my trade tab open, which I really don't need. It's just this thing up here. Uh, I, I, I actually may just close it down right now. So that that was just my trade tab where I can quickly click buy market, sell market, and then enter a order order window from there. Um, but I usually mainly use the active tick, uh, ticker right here. Um, so I have time and sales, which is, let's see if we go on SPY, something might be popping up. Nope. Well, uh, nothing's moving right here, SPY, but it usually, um, has all like the, the recent newest time someone's bought or sold at a certain price, the size they bought and the time, uh, timestamp of when they bought. Uh, that's why I keep times and sales. Helps me a lot out um, knowing when something's breaking resistance, how many more buys are coming in as fast. Or if we're at a resistance, um, is everybody starting to dump their shares? And that's when you'll see a lot of red going uh, flashing down on the screen or a, a lot of green if it's about to break the resistance. Um, that's why I use that for understanding what people are doing, uh, what type of orders are going to uh, processed. Next thing is active trader, this big window right here. Um, I started using this like really, really for the past like three months, three four months. I think I really started using this. Um, I think it's really quite cool. I didn't like it at first for some reason, but I think it's really cool because, um, let's say if I turn auto send off, I can, um, set my quantity right here, find the price right here. So I want to get in at two twenty, limit. It sets an automatic limit if I'm using the ladder itself right here. Hundred. 100 uh, shares of SPY at 220, and then I can send my order in at that position or uh, price. Pretty cool for me. I really use auto send for that, and um, we'll use a some some sort of like this this thing right here. I I, I can't buy, but that's what I mean. Um, just getting entered in at a position where I want to right here. Um, and then selling out quick is the reason I have auto send on. Um, really nice because it shows you your average price, profit loss today, profit loss for your open, uh, how many shares you've bought, and then um, positions flat that I have I'm holding right now. Um, that's my active trader window. I also have level two down here. Helps a lot. We'll go over that uh, later in the video um, if we get a chance. And then uh, that's how I set up the all the windows and panes and all that. Now we can um, move on to the chart itself and how I um, have the chart set up. So uh, day, a lot of these uh, tools are used for day trading. There's uh, tons and tons of other indicators out there. Um, there's the Fibonacci trace, uh, retracements. There's... A lot of custom studies out there that you can use these are the most widely used in the markets so this is why I use them um, but I just I like to keep it clean not too many lines not a lot of stock traders you'll see has a lot of indications on their screen I just think a lot of that builds a lot of noise for me Wow, I just said a lot a lot of times not tennis um, but what I'm saying is indications again are used to use as indicators not sort of um not reasons to buy into a stock use them as indications not confirmations of buying into a stock um as that's my little say on that so first of all the main one of the main stronger um elements in my studies 
is the VWAP. And that is going to be uh, this light pink line, the p purple pinkish line, and then the yellow line at the bottom. VWAP is a volume weighted moving average. Um, so they can act a lot of times as a resistance and a lot of times as a support. So you have to really keep a close eye on um, when trading above the VWAP and below the VWAP, you'll uh, hear a lot of people say that, oh, the stock is trading above the VWAP right now or it's trading below. If it's trading above, they mean between the top and middle VWAP right here. And if you're trading above the, or between the top and middle VWAP, that means the stock is constantly on a uptrend. Um, and below the middle and bottom VWAP is a consistent downtrend. Um, and you can really get closer and get look into different stocks on their daily charts and you'll really see it. So let's just look at the SN or SPY, right? So we broke below the middle VWAP right here, fell all the way down to the bottom VWAP, pushed up closer to the middle VWAP, didn't really reach there, got rejected by this EMA, fell down to the bottom VWAP, got supported here, pushed up to the middle VWAP, and then sort of just consolidated throughout the day and sold off in the end. Um, again, signs of indication. I, I like to use them to see if the stock is uh, overall in an uptrend, downtrend, um, see how close it is to the closest strong support and the closest resistance. Um, that's VWAP. You can add these studies by going into the study tab right here, clicking edit studies, and we type in um, VWAP right here, and then double tap that over into this section right here. So I'll give you a chance to do that real quick. Um, I think you're following along, Samir. And whoever else, um, give you a chance to add your studies in. All right, that's the VWAP. Again, you can add the moving average. So I have two moving averages throughout the day. I have a nine length and a 15 length one. Um, my nine length is if you double click it, uh, the VWAP you do not need to edit. Uh, the moving averages you'll need to edit. So the moving average is a nine length, which is widely used. Again, you can uh, not for the VWAP. You will not edit the VWAP settings. Those are sort of just default. Um, moving averages, again, these numbers are personal preference. I found that 9 and 15 work the best for me. Um, so I that's what I have. You can change them in the future if you want to do it. Some people use 12. Um, but I think 9 and 15 is the most widely used. And then, um, so you can uh, create it. One of my colors is light blue and the light length is nine. So I know the nine length one is light blue. And then my other one is more of a darker blue, which is a length 15. Um, the only thing I'll change is the length, nothing else. Everything else stays the same. Um, and then the simple moving average. I have this. It is a different color than all of them, which is a green. And just so I know it is simple moving average, not a moving average. And that length is 200. I've seen a lot of people use um, 180 on here too. Uh, 200, I think, just gives more of a confirmation for me. That's why I use 200. Uh, I've seen people use 180 as the length on this as well. So that is um, really up to preference too. After you start trading, you'll understand um, what the best is for you. For me, it's been 200 so far. Um, next thing would be typing in MACD. MACD you can bring right here into your lower um, sort of setting right here, lower 
you do not need to edit the MACD, nor do you need to edit the RSI. Um, if you do, these are my settings right here. I don't believe you have to edit them, though. They should already be default, if I'm right. So that's adding in your studies. Feel free to pause it if you have not caught up yet. Um, next thing uh, we want to see is moving average DMA. No, it is a EMA. Let me go back to my studies. Moving average exponential and moving average exponential. DMA, what is a DMA? I'm not even sure. Um, EMA, moving average exponential. People call it an EMA. Um, moving average exponential, moving average exponential, and then SMA, which is a simple moving average. Um, yeah. Great. Uh, moving on to appearance. I should have done this at first. I don't know why I... Um, didn't do this at first. On this box, the only thing you'll change is overlap of volume, I believe. That's just because, um, let me show you what the difference with it is. See, I apply it, right? It's going to be on the chart. If you like that, great. Um, I sort of like it off the chart. That's why I don't have it on the chart. So I want a separate sort of tab for it. You can definitely have it on the um, chart if you want to. So overlapping volume, I don't like it overlapped. That's why I have it down here. Did it just like... Hmm. I thought it changed sizes there for a second. Might have. Anyways, um... I think that's the only thing I have changed there, the overlap volume part, price access, haven't done anything here, time access, the expansion area for me is 550 bars to the right. Um, what that'll do is give you this, um, let me go to, uh, when you double click into your default sort of screen, that'll give you all of this area right here. For me, it just shows me, um, I don't know, I just, I just like having that much sort of break room to the right. You can lower it, leave it at zero, whatever you want. I just like having this much room on the right for me, just for visual, visualization purposes. Um, that is the time axis. And then uh, time frames, favorite time frames. Uh, you can copy these time frames. You should be able to add them on. Add time frame in the end time or intraday, whatever day, time interval, however many days, and then aggregation period of each candle being how many minutes long, five minute one day, eight minute one day, whatever it is. I personally use the most a five day, five minute, and then um, five day, 15 minute if I'm taking a long t longer time like long term position um like for throughout a day if maybe uh 5 day 15 minute and then I'll also look at the 5 day 15 minute to see what the EMA is on the bounce if it's lower than both the EMAs and the 5 day 5 minute then uh the EMA on the 15 minute will look better sometimes um other than that I'll look at the 180 day 4 hours this shows a general trend of the equity or a stock or future over the 180 day period gives a better visualization for any trader of the direction of the stock and also um, has a lot of indications on that what are widely, well, widely used of a 180 day uh, rejection region or SMA or anything of that sort, EMA. Um, other thing is one day, one minute has a lot of noise on it really don't use it um that day what's the best time frame if you want to just analyze that day's trend um yeah so five day 15 minute or five day five minute would be a really good sort of um trying to see the trend for the whole day uh 15 minute probably would be great 
Like, let's say if you're trying to look at SPXS in the morning, let's say we're looking right here. Um, so this looks a little bit ugly, right? So these these aren't like very like flowing with it correctly. That's just this is because there's no volume on SPXS that early in the morning. The volume on these really start hitting when the bell hit uh, bell opens up. So um, I guess five day fifteen minute would have a better sort of like general idea if you want. Um, I widely use five day five minute to see pre market and um, intraday trends. Definitely not a one day one minute though. Um, that'll give you a lot of noise of um, a lot of noise of what is going on between traders. Someone might be dumping shares in one minute, but that this next minute that candle is getting bought right back up. So you want to keep a general of the t whole time frame. You want to keep an idea of the whole time frame, not just one minute on that um sort of candle. Um, that is my time periods. So let's see, let's go back here. Appearance. Um, this is how I have my candles set up. I have them filled up, filled down. Um, fill down and then volume bar. I have them colored as the symbol ticks. So if uh, that, that little candle goes red, then, um, You feel like your candles are fat when you zoom in. Well, if I zoom in like really like to the minute or really close, then my candles look pretty fat too. Huh? Um, I think um, especially if I'm like, what is this? The five, look at the bottom right here, right? 835, 840. This is just five minutes, 10 minutes right here. They look pretty fat. Um, whenever I zoom in, I literally take a little big of a piece to zoom in on that one time area just to understand that time better. Um, other than that, I don't really have any sizing on my candles. This is the only appearance appearance thing that I've done is fill up, fill down, show the wicks, and then dojis look like uh, clears right here. I'll give you a second to um, fill that up. Interesting. <laughs> I was just reading that group chat of uh, that short position. Appearance, equities, haven't done anything here. Options, haven't done anything there. Futures and Forex, haven't done anything there. Um, I believe you should be caught up. Yeah, I believe you should be caught up into looking like this. Uh, I can't think of anything else that I'm missing out on. Damn, we're already 36 minutes into the stream. It's good work, good work, guys. Um, let me see. Let me know if your chart looks the same, I guess. If you have any other questions on how to make your chart look better. And then, um... up a lot of stuff here okay um yeah i'm just waiting on samir to confirm that his stuff looks the same and we'll keep going our next topic that we'll get into is pre-market and um yeah that'll be something interesting and for that we'll look at a stock like how many times do i Time axis at 550. 550 to the right. Um, 
Um, we'll go ahead and start looking at pre-market trends now. Uh, let's take a actual stock into consideration for this and not just a, um, I missed the one thing under MACD. Uh, that is going to be a RSI right here. So, um, here, I'll leave this up for you while I explain the pre-market part. Um, so we'll take a look into a actual stock for pre-market trends going forward. Um, instead of the SPY, I feel like we've talked about the SPY a lot. Let's look at a um, certain stock going forward now. Yeah, it is a RSI right here. RSI. Let's type in RSI right here, and it should be the first one. Um... I'm thinking if I should go over these specific indicators or should I go over that in another video? I have one question. Why did you advise me not to buy SPXS? Huh. RSI doesn't pop up. Like whenever you click settings, it doesn't show up on stream. What do you mean by that? Study, so click studies right here. It's RSI is a study, so you wanna edit studies, go into here, and then type in RSI, and then drag it over. And it should get added there. Uh, move on for now, and then I can act, uh, help you personally after the stream and to set it up or whatever if there's still anything missing. Um, I'll leave to answer your question. Why did you uh, advise me not to buy an SPXS? Well, was what was it Friday when when I when you asked me? Um, something like that SPXS right here. You asked me Thursday night, I believe, and you wanted to do it Friday morning. Well, up until when you asked me, um, I saw a general uptrend. I, I think that's when it was. I saw a general uptrend for um, SPY on the futures. That That's why, that's the main reason I said, I don't think you should buy an SPXS yet. Um, because if it could just continue to uptrend, sure, it would have been a better buy right below here, right below the view up. Because once you know it breaks the view up, you know that there's a downtrend coming, sort of, for the most part. You have to sort of get your practice in, understand again the break of the view up below, goes up, test the general area of the view up, breaks down below, goes back up, continues to fall down, um, for the rest of the day. I think that's the, that's the day, but I'm not sure. But it's, it was more than likely because I saw an uptrend on the uh, um, on the futures. Okay, anyways, going forward up into like, let's just use a heavy weighted stock. I don't want to use Apple, Tesla maybe, right? Uh, Sure, Tesla, I guess, right? Okay, um, so how I use pre-market trends, right? So I usually wake up right around this time right here, 8, 8, 10, 8, 15, gives me around 15, 20 minutes. I never make a trade at the bell just because think or swim can be really laggy at the bell itself. And it can, um, no, I did not go over what a future is. Um, I don't make a trade at the bell because TJ Ameritrade has been very laggy after it went commission free at the bell. So that's that's the one reason I don't do it. That's why I wake up around 8.15, 8.10, sort of get my stocks from the scanner in, see what those are about, and then also how the overall market is doing, other stocks. So in this case, right, so um, you want to see what happened here. Tesla gapped up the night uh, in the morning. 
pushed up, pushed up, right? Has like a sort of a resistance right here at five or four fifty eight. Okay, 458 range, it has a resistance right here, and then it continues to consolidate and breaks down. Consolidation breaks down, uh, and then sort of just continues a downtrend until the, um, the market open. At the market open, you see that Tesla started surging up, all right? Why do you think this sort of surged up? And then sort of straight flat, just flat, like sold off right here. My guess would be that it sort of two things, right? Two things. You see the resistance of the pre market right here, right? You see the pre market of the pivot right here is what you call it. It started to make a higher high, but as soon as it did, it sold off again and made a pivot downwards. So my guess is that once it reaches this point, I think I will catch a rejection. And as it started uptrending, sure, it broke it for a second, right? It made a high higher than the uh, high of 450. That could that could easily be the rejection 450, but I'm looking at it in terms of pre-market. So as soon as it hits this point, you're seeing that it should catch a resistance here. If not, at least it should hold at that level so it can break later in the day. So in this case, it hit this. It broke it, but it the candle closed at it, or if not below that level right, of these two levels right here, and then continued to sell off after that. Again, came back up. Now, now we don't really look at the pre market, right? Now we look at what just happened intraday. Came up, tested this four fifty area again, tested this um, resistance area. Pushed up, sold off, and then pushed up, tested it, tested it, and then broke through it, obviously. Um, that's sort of how I use pre-market. Let's really take a look at SPY. I guess um, this might be able to give us better sort of um, way to look at pre-market. So pre-market generally just shows you the direction of a stock and how it should pre perform intraday. Um, generally that's how it works. Um, it can be because of this coronavirus volatility that it does not always work like that. Uh, but generally before the coronavirus, um, and all this market scare, generally that's how it worked, right? So you have a strong fat push up and it's selling off. Um, in this case, you would expect the market to bounce back somewhere right here because it did sell off a lot. You'd expect it to bounce back, go back up, and pre-market it does, and then it continued to sell off again, and continued to, and had a bounce right here, right? It supported right here. Um, I think it supported just because it sold off too much, or even if it was, is it hitting this bottom view up, and then sort of just had a strong trend upwards. Um, but what you can see is pre-market, that it's having an issue breaking over this level right here. Um, let me draw it out. Oh shit, where'd it go? Um, I think it was this one. Yeah. So you you want to sort of uh, draw in a line right here. Right. Sort of close as close as I can. Um, it sort of hit that point, resisted, broke down, came back up resisted at this point, right? Before it pushed up to that level, resisted, came down, pushed back up, resisted, sold off. That's what pre-market will show you. Um, and in this case, this is called a double top, which is a formation for a, um, a pattern in stocks. You can look, Google those patterns again. Um, and sort of showed that it resisted right here, sold off, resisted again, and then at the bell, it caused it to sell off. Um, it's not always clear that pre-market will show you um, the general trend, right? If pre-market something is pushing up, it does not mean it'll continue to push up as soon as the bell uh, hit. At the bell, a lot of traders can continue to take profit from their previous hold. If they held it last night, they might want to take profit in the morning. Um, a lot of the times, these trends are more... Uh, prevalent and stocks and low cap stocks and that's 
really why I use um trying to find a good gapper. Let's see BRMA. Let's see. So yeah, when we look at BRMA, BR, BMRA, low cap stock, right? There's um, a really pretty cheap per share. And if I draw a line across, came up, rejected this re re uh, region right here, sold off, came back up, rejected, rejected, rejected. Well, it's not rejecting it, but it's testing it, my bad. So it came up, rejected it, sold off, came up, testing it again. And as we see in pre-market, um, you'll see sometimes, you'll see more volume bars right here. And as the volume begins to increase up towards the more to the buying power, buying side, you'll see it break rejections and then come back down and sort of test that area again. Um, and then at the market, it started selling, uh, going up because it, uh, it held that basically uh, view up very well. Um, yeah, again, so pre-market trends overall, they sort of just show the trends, resistance throughout the day, pre-market resistance can be very important and pre-market supports can be very important as well. Um, where I do look at a lot of pre-market is natural gas and crude oil. Um, these, these sort of futures really show direction and they sort of hold true to that direction. Um, like for example, crude oil, right? Um, in this case, right? You're looking at the future and it's selling off. It's pushing up towards the view up. Uh, it might be a little small to see. It's selling off, right? Consolidating, slowly selling off. And then I had like a little push right here, rejected, sold off, sold off, sold off, sold off, sold off. And at the, shit, uh, what did I just do? And that the market open right here uh, at like 8.30, sort of had, try to push up, sold off, held that consolidation, sold off, sold off, sold off. So for futures, it, it's easier to see the direction of something as it will play. Uh, but also you can get caught in something like this, right? Um, one of my friends, Alif, he was asking to buy a DWT position um, Thursday night. And I sort of told him that that wouldn't be smart because after uh, crude oil opened and he and, and him asking me, crude oil was up 5% on the future. And in that case, since UWT is a three times leveraged ETF, UWT or DWT is a three times leveraged ETF, B, D, DWT being the inverse of crude oil. Um. DWT being the inverse of crude oil, DWT would have been down 15% because it's a three-time leverage. So that's the, re that's the reason I advise him this night. I was like, hey, since the futures are showing an uptrend right now, it's supporting at VWAP, getting resisted at the top VWAP, supporting at VWAP, getting rejected, resi uh, but it's still holding higher. That's why I told him, hey, I don't think it's a smart position. Although... Still pre-market, and while the futures were open, crude oil had a change of direction, right? Where it sold off. It broke through the VWAP. It broke through the SMA and held below the EMA and cons consistently sold off, sold off, sold off, right? And if you were to buy in right here at the market open, it sold off a little bit more, consolidated, push up, sold off. And then you had your whole test of it going, changing directions back towards the upside. Where it hit view up, got rejected, consolidated, sold off. Um, so that's really why uh, I really look at pre-market trends. Sort of see how the stock is moving throughout the, throughout the morning. Because that's where you have a lot of investors playing um, playing uh, news and stuff. A lot of news is released pre-market. Um, so for a lot of these uh, stocks like CODX, it's a sort of a coronavirus stock, people call it. They, they release news on FDA approvals, mask, if, they, if they're in more production of mask, if FDA is allowing them this, that, 
a lot of that news is released pre-market and people are reacting to how that stock should trend in pre-market. So news is a big catalyst in pre-market to see uh, a trend or a pattern. And a lot of times fundamentals will take over in pre-market instead of technical trading. Um, so, and I'm sort of in the middle right here and I'm rambling on, but um, I am more of a technical trader than a fundamental trader. That's why I look at these indications of VWAP, EMAs, and all that. And I also keep an eye on the news, but I don't make all my trades based off the news. I make it more trade, uh, more make more of my trades based off of te- technical indicators and technical price points. All right, moving on. Um, all right, let's do level two really quickly here. So level two is um the, these blue exchanges that are back here. You have the Nasdaq, and when it's open, you'll see like a lot more exchanges uh right here down here, and whoever is offering the best price point for the ask and bid. Um. So level two really is what your bid is at currently and what your ask is at, right? Uh, turn auto send off. Um. So the bid right now is at 1066 with 100 shares by order. And 100 is represented by 1. And 1,000 would be represented by the 10. So, right, you just add two zeros to the end of these numbers. Um, so you're saying that someone is bidding. So you have a sell order at 1066. So someone wants at least 1066 from them, right? So uh you have to buy a stock or you have to in order to buy a stock from someone someone has to be selling that stock right so that's why the selling price is right here and the ask is what someone wants to sell sell the stock for so someone wants to sell the stock for 1070 and they're saying are you going to buy in at 1070 right and someone's saying i want the stock to I want to buy the stock at 1066. Are you willing to sell me the stock at 1066? Right? So that's how you sort of look at these two numbers, understand bid and ask, right? Basics. Um, what I wanted to really hone sorry, what I really wanted to really hone in on is the numbers right here, right? The ask numbers and the buy numbers. So the buy uh the buy buyer uh the BS is um buy size or bid size and then ask size, right? Obviously. The more higher numbers of ask size, right? Let's let's say let's say the stock is moving up and down, up and down, up and down, right? Um, and you get to a point of right here, right? You get to the high, high of this candle at ten sixty seven, right? This stock got to t- or eleven sixty seven. This stock got to eleven sixty seven, as you see on the high. This stock is gonna have a lot of ask orders here because people do not want you, want you to get past this resistance right the more numbers here the bigger numbers you have here is the more resistance at a certain price point so currently the stock at 1079 has a resistance of um 1100 orders right so you're going to need someone to buy out these 1100 orders in in order for the stock to go higher um and it can work vice versa too, right? So let's say someone is supporting the stock with 300 shares at 1055. So you're going to have to sell 300 shares to this person to break that support, right? You're going to have to sell them this many shares and then you'll break that support. So that's um, that's sort of the basics. And there might be better YouTube videos out there. Let me know if you have any questions as we're going along. Um but that's sort of the basics of these numbers right here. And ask orders and buy orders will play a big role when trading the S and P, uh, SPY, not S and SPY, yeah. Um, because they can get to certain points, right? They can get to certain re- uh, rejection regions right here as two thirty four, and they'll have tons and tons and tons of ask orders to reject it, right? Right, like right now, we have um. So many ask orders at well, it's moving twenty one to twenty uh two twenty one right. So we have a lot of ask orders at eighty, 
So we're showing a sign of rejection right here. It does not want to get past that. People are going to have to buy out that um, price um, going forward. And then again, you have a support building here at 22, 21, uh, 221.59 with the ease amount of buy uh, bid size. So that's where your support is. And that's how many people are, um, that's how many shares are uh, resisting it. Again, uh, this might look a lot better and easier to understand when the market is open um, in that case. So that is what level two is, and that's how I look at it. You can also see a lot of the same uh, sort of if information on your active trader. Right here, we have a support of buying right here, and it's moving along as you can see. And you have a resistance of uh, 490 shares at 221.82. This might be an easier way to look at it for some people. And uh, so you see it just broke that. It just broke that um, resistance, right? So the ask order or the sell order just got higher. And it is resisting at two, 222 now. And it's bringing it down, right? That's how um, big orders, you'll, you'll be able to visualize big orders and even uh, old orders being combined when the market is open. Um, last thing is futures. Uh, so now I'm going over futures. Let me just load the phone. Um, okay, let's see. Safe has a question here. Um, added. Just got added to a group chat. Okay. Um, so... Safe is asking, so if Alif held DWT for the entire day, would he have been up since the crude oil went down later in the day? Let's see. Let's bring up the crude oil. Here, let's do this, right? Um, I'll open up crude oil on my top window, and I'll open up DWT down here. So it just answers Safe's question real quick. I think it's a pretty good question. Um, so Safe, this right here is Friday's chart, right? Let's look at it um, a little bit more closely. Uh, All right. <clears throat> so futures. So this is the crude oil future, and then this is, let's look at Friday's um, trading day for DWT. All right, so right here, we want to take a start, we want to start taking a look at, so let's see, how do I go about explaining this? So look, that's... Okay, so right here, the, the, the future is closed with the market, right? Um, right here, they closed. I don't think that's right. Wait, sorry. I'm getting a little confused here. Yeah, okay. So the future is closed right here at, let's say, what is this, 25.43? Twenty-five forty-three, right? Um, futures close there, and if you look at the bell time, right? The bell, the the futures open around twenty-four, um, seventy, seventy-three, right? So it closed at twenty-five, but opened twenty-four. So just you no, know, actually, actually, I'm sorry. By the time it closed, it was. The price was higher than it is. It was open when it opened. No, the price was. So what I'm saying is the crude oil the next day, if you think of it in terms of after hours trading, right? DWT doesn't. So crude oil is a future. Futures trade more throughout the day and have longer trading days than DWT, which is a ETF that trades on the stock market. Uh, futures don't always trade on the same time, right? They they have longer periods of trading. So 
if you look at it here, let's say Alif said he wanted to buy DWT when it closed, right? Um, at the bell the day before. He would have had to buy it at around $10, right? Around $10. When he opened up in the morning, he would have been down $3 a share right here at 7.5, right? Because it gapped down. That means crude oil was pushing up when it opened. So the difference there is the future closed at a lower position than it opened. And it opened at a higher position. So in DWT is the inverse. Therefore, that um, he was betting that crude oil would open high, lower. But it opened, in fact, higher during the pre-market hours. Yes, throughout the day it did push up. But um, let's just say he was betting for that specific time. All right. So let me go back to your question here. I want to make sure I answer it properly. If, if Alif out DWT the entire day, would he have been up on crude oil since oil went down later in the day? Yeah, he would have been up, right? So let's say he bought at market open, right? Market opens uh, right here. And he bought at, let's just say he got a good fill at 11.20, right? 11.20. If he held through this all the way up until 13, down, and then breaking his break even at, uh, and goes down at $11 a share basically, and then holding, 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 going up to $14 a share, eventually if he held the whole day, he would have been up 86 cents. Or, no, he got, we're saying he got filled at 11.20, he would have been up 60 uh, cents a share, right? Unless you obviously sold off somewhere throughout the day but um yeah overall in the case right in 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 simple words let's go to a very large time frame well maybe not that large this is wow i hmm this is interesting right here. Why did DWT drop so much when? Okay, that's interesting to me. Um, sorry. Uh, okay, let's just take a look at right here. This is basically, um, what date is this? So you had the gap down on the 3.9, right? 3.9, you have a gap down. Because this is, I think, when the news came out for the Russia thing or whatever, Saudi and Russia. On 3.9, it came out. And you have a gap up pre-market on this on the same day right here. Let me go back to it. Right here on 3.9, it's gapping up. Right, it's gapping up from pre market all the way up until the next day because it was on a weekend, right? So it's gapping up pre market and it continued up the rest of the day because it had a gap. Crude oil went down, so DWT went up. It's inverse ETFs. Um, so yeah, as crude oil sold off, DWT would go up again, three times volatility, and there's decay on it. You gotta be aware of that. Um, but I am really confused as to why DWT dropped so much right here from 28 to basically 12 that interests me i might have to take a look into that after the stream is it a big manipulation play or um something like that i'm gonna have to look into that after um but yeah so that's that's how i um that's how that's how that's how the inverse works um let's see Futures have implied volatility, time decay, and appreciation price. Oh, he's talking about someone else. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Next thing. Uh, so futures, right? Let's go back to futures. Sorry, got sidetracked there. Futures. Futures is basically in in simple words is buying a contract for the price that you can sell that item for in the future or buy that item for, for in the future um 
I so I was just explaining this to Alif earlier. Uh, for me, I don't personally know how futures work for the uh, ES and NQ because those are um, those are uh, market futures, but these uh, NQ GC ES. Sorry, gold is the gold one, right? So this is how many ounces per gold they're giving right now. Uh, so the value of gold can go up or down. As simple as that, right? Um, with the market selling off, you'll see the value of gold. Um, <clears throat> you'll see them. So so the gold, the dollar always used to be backed by gold, right? Now it's, it's a little bit less like that because of um, what I've heard is it's it's really less like that because of how much um, money you can just print, right? How much how much the the the, the, the you can print money, right? So I that's what I've heard in my group chats that I've talked, but um, I'm not sure how the gold uh, futures really works. But uh, so what I can what I can tell you is crude oil. There's corn futures. There's so many like different commodities that have futures behind them. And how these work are, um, so gold opened up plus 10, right? So this, um, gold opened up plus 10. So I think you'll be okay. It's still consolidating. Um, anyways, Sorry, I'm getting really sidetracked here. Okay, back to crude oil. So crude oil and stuff is literally paying $22. Uh, it's like buying a contract for, let's say I bought it right now, right? $22.73. That's how much I'm buying a contract for. Like that's how much a contract costs way more, right? So a contract will cost you around $3,200 uh, to buy. But... um. But what you're saying is that as a like a lot of like corporation and stuff might use, might use futures trading and stuff. Um, when when you see a lot of supply and trading stuff, this is what they're doing. They're locking in prices at a certain point, right? They're locking in prices at a certain point. So later later in time, they can buy from other manufacturers and producers. To really um, lock in prices at at let's say twenty two seventy nine, uh, that is how crude oil uh, works. Natural gas again, I don't know how um, futures on the 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 market work itself like that because that's not really something you physically buy and sell. I know if you have like a crude oil uh, futures on you like a contract and you hold it overnight and it expires. Some of these, some of these contracts will literally ask you to give them that many barrels of oil at that certain price, like a physical barrel of oil, and you have to provide that. That's how. That's what you're doing when you uh, apply for futures trading. You're accepting all those terms and conditions to um, be able to provide all that. You cannot just give them money to go out and buy the crude oil themselves. You have to provide them the barrels. Again, what I use futures as is, right, like, futures for me is basically understanding how markets react to news in after hours. That's how I personally take it. A lot of people trade futures of a lot of stuff, right? For me, when I look at the S&P future is I'm watching how the market is reacting to news after hours. So now I'm... Now I know, right, that the low here, it got halted because it was 5% down, right? The S&P was down 5% uh, in the futures. So it got halted. That's why the future got halted, right? So now I know that, look, going into tomorrow, that more than likely, um, Yes, double circuit breaker. Yeah, I, I, I really think we could at least get into one circuit breaker tomorrow. And that, to me, is indicating because of the future, right? I'm looking at the future right now, 
and how much it has sold off, how much it has gapped down. So I'm looking at it in terms of how people are reacting to news, what happened over the weekend, the grown cases of coronavirus, there's no stopping of it, and all of that is being implied in the futures. Personally, that's how I look at it. Um, Again, I don't have 100% knowledge on futures. I'm sharing what I know. So, um, for so a lot of futures like ES, right? This is this is the uh, future for the S and P. Futures like natural gas and crude oil. Crude oil. I get since y'all are more interested in crude oil, we'll look at this, right? Um, every Wednesday of uh trading. Every Wednesday, unless there is a uh um national holiday or something every wednesday at 9 30 every wednesday at 9 30 there will be a report that comes out um there will be a report that comes out that shows the inventory for crude oil and you can uh i know my obs isn't covering everything i think it's just covering my um my my tos but if you Google, I think it's EIA report. That's natural gas, actually. Uh, crude oil. What is the crude oil one called? Crude oil report. Yeah, it is an EIA report. So if you search up EIA report, crude oil, it will at 930 drop a report showing if crude oil is oversupplied that that week that previous week or it's undersupplied and if it's undersupplied you'll know the value of crude oil will go up if it's oversupplied you'll know that market uh supply and demand the price of crude oil will go lower um sorry let me read the live stream youtube sorry sorry sir uh did you just already go what is the future wait what what's that that's only if i sell a future right if I buy a future, I don't have to worry about providing anyone a barrel of future. How do we profit off the circuit breaker? Okay. Let me um, go over this again. So if you're buying the future of crude oil, right? And this is a future, or this, this is the May, 20, uh, May 2020 contract. If this contract closes on me, and you'll, you, can, you can Google expirations for each uh, thing, right? If the contract closes on me overnight, it will never close intraday, right? If it closes on me while the futures is uh, changing contracts, um, if, if, if the contract closes, then it can be. I don't know how it is for crude oil, but I know a lot of com- commodities, they require physical um, sort of physical uh, products you have to give to them. Just like crude oil, corn, wheat, you have to provide that at a pro, uh, at a price. So that's what happens if you uh, hold the contract and it expires on you. If I bought, like, I can literally buy one contract of crude oil right now and sell it in a couple of minutes or a couple of hours, right? I'll be okay because I'm I'm trading it like that that as a high frequency trader. If I hold this, this is mainly for farmers and stuff like that who hold corn contracts for longer, who hold and then an Exxon and stuff like that, big corporations who hold crude oil contracts for longer because they, 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 they can get crude oil at a certain cheaper price is what I'm saying. Um, if you buy a future, I don't have to worry about selling anyone a barrel. If you buy it and, and it closes on you in expiration and, it, and, and that certain contract requires you to, then yes, you will have to uh, provide a barrel. Uh, but again, it's different for all, uh, all, all, all futures. You have to really look into the future and the contract that, that month specifically to understand, um, what is going on. How do we profit off of a circuit breaker? (sighs) This is an interesting question. So there's two types of circuit breakers. Okay. That, uh, let me just, that's going to be wrapping it up for the futures and I'll go into more of a, um,
I'll go more into a question and answer now. So futures is, I've wrapped up what I really think. Uh, should I tell that guy that the GCY gold isn't increasing? I know, shout out to one. Okay, all right. Um. Yeah, so the one question we have right now is how do we profit off of the circuit breaker? And do I think it's good to buy SPXS pre-market? Okay, um, so we'll do the circuit breaker, right? So going into a market in the morning, there's two types of circuit breakers, right? The ones you, you're you most widely known. Don't delete these live stream videos, please. Yeah, no, they'll be uploaded to the YouTube channel right after, um, I believe. So I think I have that setting on. Um so circuit breaker halts, right? So you have two types of them. One is being on a specific equity, right? You'll see a lot of these circuit breaker halts on um, on low cap stocks that move really fast, right? And then you have a market wide circuit breaker, and which is you've seen a lot in the past week or two, and uh, that that is being being uh, the market wide circuit breaker. How do you make money during a circuit breaker, right? For a market-wide circuit breaker, I am not completely sure yet. That's my answer to that, right? Um, what I can say is usually when a, when a circuit breaker does take place, usually when it does take place, right, if it's getting halted on the way down, it'll open lower and it'll continue down, right? But, as again, I don't know how they completely work with the SPY, right? I can tell you. When you when so so uh, Boeing, I don't know if I'll be able to find it. This happened a very uh, a, a, a good while ago. Um, yeah, I, I, I doubt I'm able to find it. Anyways, Boeing one day got halted on the way down. That is a specific equity getting halted on a circuit breaker. That is called a T12 halt, right? A T12 halt. T12 halt is something that a stock goes into to basically uh, freeze traders for five minutes and and it only happens if a stock moves 10% higher or 10% lower. Um, and this happens a lot in small cap stocks, right? It, these, these stocks that move like 100, 200% a day with these small caps, you'll see a lot of these market or circuit breaker halts happening intraday. And this isn't a good example because that didn't have much volume um, in the day, but like right here, right here, right here. This is a specific stock, right? We hit a high, right? We hit a high and we're going down. Right? And right here, if a change is 10%, right? If a change is 10%, then it'll gap down and open lower. That's why you see a little gap right here because it opened lower after gapping down. <laughs> That is on a specific equity. So during a circuit breaker halt, uh, market wide is what I'm assuming for your question, Elise. Uh, I, 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 what I would do is right. So if a, if a, you see the pre market right, and you, and the market opens up and it's selling off, selling off, selling off. You see the percentage up here going to negative seven point five. I would get in that get an SPXS right then, uh, as soon as I, right before I see the market halting. The reason is that because if a market halts on the way down, it opens lower. So as soon as it opens, if I don't see a bounce, right? If it doesn't go back up, then um, then I'll sell. I, I'll hold my position. But if I see a bounce, right, which can easily happen, I've seen it as these circuit breaker halts have been happening recently. I've seen them as soon as the circuit breaker halts, it opens up, and the market start pushing towards the upside. You have you have to be careful. So. The best thing would be to do is maybe monitor the direction as soon as you see it about to go into a circuit a circuit breaker halt and buy the inverse. So SPXS, right? SPY selling off, right? 6%, 6.5%, 7%. 7%. I can almost guarantee you the markets will have it sell off and go all the way into a circuit breaker halt. That's when I'd buy into SPXS. So that's how I would uh, profit on a circuit breaker. If I'm trading the market, other small caps, 
way different story. If I see it, yeah, Samir, I'll get to that question in one second. Uh, what was I saying? Sorry. Oh, as as a, for a, a specific equity, right? A stock that is about to get halted up. If I see it nearing that 9%, 10% range, and at 10%, it'll sort of hold that range, hold that range, and it'll go into a halt. Uh, and uh, the, uh, I don't know any stocks that have done this recently. And, and, and they do. They do. Uh, a lot of these stocks do them very often. Uh, right here, right? You have, you have a halt right here. Pushed up 17% on this one five-minute candle. It goes into a halt, and I believe this is a ten minute halt right here. Just because there's um, there's no 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 candles right here, so five minutes, you have to wait. Pause due to volatility. This is what will happen, right? You have your uh stocks that are paused due to volatility, and then resume trading, right? Um. So yeah, right. You see, you see, you see it going up, halted, and it opens a little bit higher. Not always. Will it always sell off like this? More than not, if it halted on the way up, it'll continue to go up. I'll guarantee you that. Most of the time, 9 out of 10 times, if it halts on the way up, it'll continue to go up. In this case, it went down, halted, right? I'm pretty sure there's a halt, another halt here. I can sort of tell uh, that there's another halt here. Halted down, and it opened way down, and it continued to sell off, right? Um, that's how it works on specific equities. Bobby, um, okay. All right. Yeah. So now on to Samir's question based on the future of, uh, and this is probably going to be the last question unless y'all have any last minute, um, things. <laughs> um, this is the best, this is the, uh, the, the, what I expect to happen with SPXS going forward. <sighs> right now we base so so we have so this is this is how the mar the market was on Friday, right? You had it push up pre market, uh, sold off, right? Open at the bell right here. Sold off, sold off, pushed up, broke over, continued to sell off, pushed up, sold off, made lower low uh. Lower highs here, right? So lower high isn't as high. Lower high isn't as high. Isn't as high. Continue to sell off. <sighs> Pre-market SPXS, right? So Samir, I can't give you a confirmed opinion on this right now. More than likely, I expect the market to sell off a little bit more. And I feel like when, when I see the uh, trend in the morning for this, when I see the uh, how uh, the future is in the morning, if it's uptrending in the morning, obviously I wouldn't get in a position. If I see it getting to a position of like this, right? If if I see it do something like this, where it pushes up, holds this level, continues down, I still wouldn't buy in at the VWAP right here. I wouldn't. I would expect it to bounce on the VWAP and continue to go up. Even though we're in a bear market, I don't I wouldn't support that decision. But when I see it go up here, and uh, get resisted here, break down below the VWAP, and hold at this SMA a little bit, and break below the SMA, I would get into a position right here, probably. Right here. And I would get catch this move, and then I don't know if I would be in this move still, but if I'm not in this move, and I see a breakdown, and I'm pushing back up, I am more than likely going to uh, get into SPXS at the top of this uh, position right here, because I know... It got rejected earlier, it got rejected earlier, and it, it did push higher, but it's also showing these red uh, red candles of falling back down. And as soon as it breaks the EMA and VWAP right here, I'd get in the position right here for that, uh, what is that, negative 1.22 on the future. Uh, I'm not sure what that would be on the SPY, so let's, let's just take a quick look at it. Market open, right? So we saw it on the future go up. And when I do trade SPXS, I don't look at the future. I look at SPY. So I know that it got rejected by the VWAP. Fall, breaks right below. Consolidates, consolidates. Pushes back up to the VWAP. See a rejection coming. And then I would hold this probably through that. 
I know I'm just trading how I trade, basically. I know I wouldn't get this whole move. I'd maybe get uh, half of that move, right, which is still 1.2%. And, and SPXS is a three times leverage. So in that case, it'd be a 3.6% uh, move. Um, if I were to hold through the hold through the uh, half half of the half of the move down again, we're, we were looking at this earlier that it broke through the VWAP and it can got like a resistance right here, holding it downwards. Negative two point five on the SPY SPXS is a three times leverage sold off. That's about six percent, right? Um, that's how I would sort of go about trading SPXS tomorrow morning. As of right now. This specific moment, this specific moment, although it did gap down, it's not showing showing a sign of trending down, right? It's it pushed up, sold off, held on the EMA, pushed up, sold off a little bit, held on the VWAP. It's under the EMA now, right? There's very light volume though, right? There's very light volume. There's only two hundred four shares on this one candle, very light volume. So uh, I can't really make a decision right now, right? Um, but if I do see a break below the view up, really, really interested into uh, making sure that I have confirmation of a sell off. And if it breaks below, I might, I might, it might be smart to take a SPXS position. I'm not sure. Uh, I would really have to have to take a look. I would I personally would not trade SPXL in the bear market at all. Right. We're in a bear market overall. Right. Overall, the market is selling off. I don't want to risk myself getting into something to to bet against the trend, right? What makes me think that the SPXL, if I hold it right, that it will go the opposite direction? For me, I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. Maybe the only time I take a small SPXL position is if I see a small little bounce, then I'd possibly take it. If I see it at the bottom VWAP, and I see confirmation of SPXL, right? So uh, if I see it at the bottom view up, right? Holds, 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 sells off, right? I, I that's, that's not confirmation for me. That's not confirmation. Holds, sells off below the view up, pushes up, pushes up. Once it breaks the EMA, I would hop in for this small little gain right here, small little change. That's the only time I'd take a trade on SPXL because I do not want to bet against the trend. The trend is downtrending, so I want to go with the flow. SPXS is an inverse, and that will go as as SPY sells off. SPXS will push up. Um, I'm talking about futures and play GTA. Yeah, so I think um that's gonna that's gonna be it for the stream. It was a very very lengthy stream, one hour thirty minutes. Uh, Samir, to answer your question, SPXS. It could be a very good buy in the morning. I don't know. It could be a very good buy. Uh, I, 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 I have hope for it. If it, it, I think it'd be a 70%, 60%, 70% buy in the morning. 60, 65%, right? I'll give you a 65% on that. I would get in on the morning. Again, I don't base my trades this early. It's it's really tough for me to basically give you a um, sort of a a prediction based on the trend right now, right? What I do, what I, the only time I would basically look at look at look at previous trends in the morning and buy sell in the afternoon is when i'm trading uh for swings right when i'm trading for a week or two i know we hit a 52 week low and it's trending up here the macd is is green but now it's turning back red so now i don't want to get in a position anymore but once i did see the confirmation about the ema that would have been a good trade there for for a day or two that's the only time uh Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my analyst buy rating is 65 on SPXS. Yeah, sure, you can call it that. Um, bold prediction, right? You also, uh, Samir, really closely want to look at the previous high, right? Previous high on this was 26.6. Do I think it can break it tomorrow? Easily. If the market sells off, easily it can, it can break 26.6. And if it does... You'll see a lot of buys coming in fast, coming in fast past 26.6, all the way up until 27, uh, and then you'll see your next test at 27. Um, yeah, that's that. That's how I would take this. 
um, this bear market continues to sell off faster, sells off like this, hopefully we see SPXS at $30, right? <laughs> that's just that's just my prediction. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of blabbering for me. Thank you guys for tuning in, man. This this really is really like fun for me. Um, try to teach y'all or help y'all. I'm not really teaching y'all. I'm trying to help y'all understand as much as I understand. Um, just trying to pass down knowledge from one person to the another. I by no means again a professional. I'll try to really give y'all the best um advice that I can going forward. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for joining. And uh, I will do a stream later again. If y'all have questions, again, text me. I know I know most of y'all who watch the stream have my number, right? Um, uh, text me. And, and, and in a future stream, I'll uh, hopefully go over that question and uh, continue to help y'all learn. Um, if, if there's one last message I'd like to leave y'all off with uh, is that Guys, we're in a bear market. I know a lot of outside retail traders, we don't, so we're considered retail traders. We don't want to be retail traders. Um, we don't want to be retail traders. We want to be the big banks. We want to think like the big banks, right? So what I would say is do not try to just buy in on the dip right now, right? The market's at a low. It's getting at an all-time low right now. It got lower still. So why would you put your money in something that you know is at a downtrend? Sure, if you're using the strat of averaging down, it might be a better option for you. But please, whoever um, wants to think about buying the dip or anything like that, please just reconsider your options. Really have a purpose behind your trade before you take your trade. Any trade you take should have a purpose behind it. And uh, do not trade against the trend. That is the one one number one rule. Do not trade against the trend. All right, guys. That's going to be it. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. And I hope to see you all in a different stream.